Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. And we're kicking off this video with finally an update on the Master Grade Version Kotoki 20th Anniversary Gunpla. On the 29th they'll be showing off which kit it's going to be. And I really wonder what it's going to be. Is it going to be something more obvious like a Zeta Gundam or like a remake of the old RX-78 II version Kotoki? Because that thing could really use an upgrade. I still love the way it looks, but mechanically speaking, it's not all that great. Um, or are they going to go for something more surprising? As long as it's something impressive for the 20th anniversary, I'm all for it. And then in other Gunpla news, um, the High Grade Slugger's Gym is getting a second round of pre-orders, so hopefully the High Grade Gym Spartan will get the same treatment, the Shars Counter Tag BB Senshi set and SD Cubelade Triple set are getting a restock over at the Gundam Base online shop, and the Realistic Model Series Ptolemyus Container Renewal Edition had its pre-orders opened on last week, Friday. And the main difference with the old version is that this one has weathering applied to it for a much cooler straight out of the box presentation. It'll set you back 20,680 yen, 150 US and will be flying your way in March next year. Next up then, uh, something far less exciting. The Gundam Metaverse, or as they're calling it, the Gundam Base Virtual World. Starting September the 22nd, the second testing phase of this virtual world will start in Japan. Free of charge. And since it does already list English as an available language, I guess this also includes people using NordVPN to set their digital presence to Japan. And if you aren't already using NordVPN to dodge those pesky region locks, you can get yourself a subscription through the link down below or the code KKRT. Not only will you be getting a sweet discount, but you'll also be supporting the channel. Um, but what will this virtual world be? Well, in their words, um, it'll now include the Gundam Next Future Room, where English is supported, and the Gumpla Room and Gumpla Public Gallery where only Japanese is supported for the time being. And in these rooms you can watch posts by other users, enjoy exhibits and communicate with other users. All what looks in like a clunky 3D application that runs in your browser. Frankly, the way I see it, this is just like a more convoluted version of something like Twitter or Instagram. Unless it's a game, I don't feel like there's a lot of meaning to adding real life inconveniences like moving from point A to point B to something like this. Just think about how you're using social media. You don't want to have to deal with the hassle of clicking too much, you just want to scroll through your feed and kill some time. And of course, it'll also have the option to purchase certain P Bandai items. And just to clarify, it doesn't annoy me like the NFT stuff. I'm just honestly afraid that this is going to be a whole lot of nothing. But we'll see how it goes and when it gets officially rolled out overseas. In more exciting news then, from the 29th of September to the 2nd of October, Bamco will be holding the Gundam Next Future Tokyo Base event. And this event will be packed with some really cool things, like a life-sized Gundam aerial head made out of used runners, recycled polycap art in collaboration with the Tokyo University of Arts, and a special base that will be given out to visitors. But without a doubt, the best thing is the second trial event for the Road to Gunpla Battle project. And during this trial, visitors will be able to scan in their Gunpla with a specially prepared smartphone and it will then appear in a movie. And not only is it limited to certain Gunpla like in the first trial, but it can even scan custom Gunpla. And I'm not just talking about custom paint here, um, they also uploaded a trailer which I'll have linked down below where you can see a Grace Ritter with some pretty hefty customizations. 
Admittedly, you can still see quite some artifacts uh, from the scanning, but I think it's important to focus on how far we've gotten in such a short period of time. Frankly, this alone would be super cool as an application. The ability to scan in your Gunpla and then have it appear in movies of famous battles like Abawaku, Genesis, The Hashmal Fight, and so on. Now, one thing they don't really show is um, your scanned Gunpla moving, so I don't think they've gotten that far yet, but that is definitely going to be the next step, and they seem to be doing really well so far. And continuing the great news, it might not be literal Gundam news, but numerous publications have reported that as soon as October, Japan might be getting rid of the visa requirements and the entry restrictions. And official word from the government could come as soon as the end of this week. So it's not official yet, but it's some very promising sounding news. Then for the Witch from Mercury, it's just uh, two reminders, really. Uh, the Tamashi Nation Store Tokyo exhibit went live today and will be held until November 13th. And the first episode will get a special airing on Saturday at the Kyoto International Manga and Anime Fair 2022. On the figure front then, the Chogokin RX 93FF new Gundam has gone up for lottery sales, both on the Tamashi Nation's online and offline stores. And considering the fact that this figure already goes for 26,400 yen, 200 US at retail, my condolences for the folks who want this figure. It might look mighty impressive with its light up feature, beam effect parts and stunning visuals, but I'm afraid that the final price tag is going to be equally stunning. And on Wednesday, pre-orders went live for the Gundam Fix Figuration Metal Composite Wing Gundam Zero Endless Worlds version Noble Color Version. It's currently slated for a February 2023 release, it'll retail for 30,800 yen, 215 US, and other than the new color scheme, it should be identical to the 2018 release. This then of course means that we're not just getting the usual Wing Gundam Zero things, but also a shield that allows for the figure to transform, and the Mesa Zwek to supercharge the Twin Buster Rifle. And if cards are more your thing, then a new set of SD Sengokuden card-ass cards has gone up for pre-order on P Bandai on the 14th. Uh, the set is currently slated for a December release and will set you back 8,800 yen, 60 US. In the gaming news then, the biggest shock came to me from Gundam Breaker Mobile. Because joining the lineup this week was the Gundam TR6 Hizantli Hizantli 2 Raw. And alongside it they also launched the Nightmare of Solomon event. So definitely an eventful week over at Gundam Breaker Mobile. Um, over at Gundam Battle Operation 2 then, the Girazulu Elec Hugo custom has joined the fight. Gundam Evolution on the other hand then, has been slowly releasing its lineup for the upcoming exhibition match that will take place next week Saturday, 12pm PT. On the Earthnoid site we have Moist Critical, who was also the first player to be unveiled, um, Dunmuir and D Pity. On the Space Noid site we only have Stolly so far, and for the casters Lemon Kiwi has been confirmed. In other news then, on the 23rd and 24th there will be a quiz and rock paper scissors competition with the life sized moving RX-78 2. That sounds so cool to be involved with and something that I would love to see happening because is he also like are they gonna have the Gundam crouch down and then do the rock paper scissors thing or is it just going to be something where they just move the hands? I really want to see that. And then Mika Akitaka's MS Shoujo note will be reappearing on the 17th although I'm not sure if they mean they're just going to be like republishing existing work or if we're going to see new works. I am of course hoping for the latter. Um, Gundam Thunderbolt will be celebrating its 10th anniversary with a special website linked down below. 
and an exhibition at the Gundam Base Tokyo, which will be held from September the 30th until October 31st. And Gundam will also be part of the National Treasure Exhibition at the Tokyo National Museum. The full name of the exhibition is Our National Treasures 150 Years in the Future and will be held from November the 2nd until January 29th, 2023. As for the things you could get this week then, on Saturday, the high-grade Wing Gundam clear color version was released at the Gundam base for 1,650 yen, 12 US. And then we're already on to the reading material. The autumn issue of Great Mechanics G, with a feature on the G which prologue machines, and the big comic superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized. Um, Whimsical Gumpla Production Notes is getting a reprint. The Shars Counterattack Complete Official Document Collection is unfortunately getting postponed to October 25th. And finally, there was the second volume of Zeon Mobile Suits uh, from Model Graphics' Gundam Archives line, this time focusing on the Zaku and the Dom. And with that, it is already time to have a look at this week's Gundam Apparel. And Bunkwede kicked things off on Friday with their Graham Aker and Mr. Bushido collection. Meaning that for 3,520 yen, 25 US, you can either get a white Graham or a black Mr. Bushido t-shirt, or for 7,700 yen, 55 US, you can get a black Graham or red Mr. Bushido hoodie. And all of these items are currently slated for a November release. On Tuesday then, reservations started for the Mobile Suit Gundam Laundry Nets. 1,520 yen, 11 US, will get you one styled after either the RX-72 Gundam, Zaku 2 or the Dome. And the first thing that especially the Zaku 2 and the Dom nets reminded me of was those Mochibi plushies. And they'll be supporting you in your laundry battles in November. And finally for Bankura then, on Wednesday you could pre-order these Celestial Being t-shirts featuring the Celestial Being emblem on a black or white t-shirt in either Setsuna Blue, Lock On Green, Tiaria Purple or Alleluia Orange. Each will set you back 3,520 yen, 25 US, and is slated for a November release. Over at Strict G then, their second Jawbro collection went live last week Friday. And included in it are a bucket hat for 5,280 yen, 37 US, a backpack for 23,100 yen, 160 US, a fanny pack for 13,200 yen, 90 US, and a small bag for 6,050 yen, 42 US. And last but not least, were a lot of Gundam Thunderbolt 10th anniversary goods that went up for sale at the Shogakukan um, PAL shop, P-A-L shop, uh, which is linked down below. 3,300 yen, 23 US gets you a t-shirt with an EO design in navy or olive, or a Daryl design in grey or burgundy. 5,060 and 35 US gets you a 3-pin set of either the Full Armor Gundam or Psycho Zaku. 7,150 and 50 US a bag in either San Brown with an EO Fleming design, or Olive with a Daryl design. There's a toolbox for 7,700 yen, 54 US in EO Fleming Blue or Daryl Red, in which you can store these similarly themed multi-tools that go for 4,730 yen, 33 US. Then there's also a wall calendar for 2,420 yen, 17 US, and high quality art duplicates that will go for 27,500 yen, 200 US, and will also come with a unique serial number. And finally, a hand towel in either red or blue for 2,200 yen, 16 US. And as always, let's wrap up the Gundam news with some polls. Two weeks ago, Gundam.info wanted to know what the RX-78-2 Gundam's biggest charm point is. And this time, it wasn't so much the results as it was the commentary on the results that I found interesting. The obvious first place was of course the coloring with 41.3%. And the comments here are basically what we all felt. The color does stand out quite a bit on the battlefield, but for better or worse, 
they are the colors that have come to define a Gundam, or at least most Gundams, because in my opinion, the ones that stray away from the traditional red, blue, and white color scheme with yellow highlights are some of the best looking Gundams. Like we have the new Gundam, the Strike Noir, and of course the Titans version of the Mark II. Uh, then in second place, we have the Cavs with 26.3%, something I personally didn't think was all that important on the RX-78 II, but apparently Kunio Okawara himself has spoken up quite a bit in interviews on his commitment to the Cavs. Now, I wonder if this is specifically about the RX-78 II or his designs in general, because admittedly, the RX-78 II has some nice calves, but compared to some other designs, those of the RX-78 II are relatively simple and they don't really stand out. Like, if I were to ask you which mobile suit has the nicest calves, I don't think the RX-78 II is really going to come up a lot. Maybe I'm mistaken. Um, but these calves were closely followed by the core block system with 26%. Originally conceived as an emergency escape system, it became an immediate hit with children thanks to its docking capabilities and probably also its ability to combine with the G armor. And all the way in last place with only 6.4% were the helium control cores which are the yellow boxes on the front skirts. And the author was definitely right when he wrote that there were probably some people out there who hadn't heard about these things before. Me included, and I think we can safely say that it was more than some people that didn't know. It was probably some people that knew about them. <laughs> um, also, uh, the helium itself is stored on the side skirts, and there are apparently quite a few explanations floating around about what the helium exactly does. Um, but one that I think makes the most sense is that it's used as a cooling mechanism for the advanced features on the Gundam, which then also neatly explains why they're not present on the vanilla gym. It's like you can cool your computer with liquid nitrogen if you want to squeeze out that last bit of performance, but it'll still run fine with just a stock cooler too. And then for the ongoing poll, with Thunderbolt's 20th volume releasing on September 30th, they want to know what our favorite Thunderbolt machine is. And currently in a relatively comfortable lead is the full armored Gundam with 193 votes, but the Psycho Zaku isn't too far off either, with 134 votes, so things could still change between these two poster boys of Thunderbolt. Um, and in the fight for third place then, we have the Atlas Gundam and the Agai Enemy Search Type Daryl Custom. And just as with first place, with 99 and 70 votes respectively, anything is still possible between the two. So if you want to cast your own vote, the link is down below. And let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite, whether it's on the list or not. For me, it's definitely the full armor Gundam if we're going by the list, and if we're going with anything goes, the gym ground type C, I definitely have a weakness for. And that has been all for this week's Gundam news. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.